Hello folks and welcome back to the channel. Together with these great partners, we are able to bring you quality information to help you reach your whitetail habitat goals quicker but more proficiently. Northwoods Whitetails Plot Doctor Harper Growing Solutions Scent Thief Real Wood Productions First Form Outdoors Ace Hardware of Harrodsburg, Kentucky Bass Pro and Cabela's So today guys, we're going to dive right into a topic that is, is very important to me because each and every year I see a lot of folks that reach out that have, you know, have tried to do a bunch of their improvements themselves, which I'm all for, hence the reason we have the channel, right? But, and or have had someone else design a property and something is just missing, right? And I feel blessed and honored to have that chance to have you or help you guys figure that out. But there's a common denominator every year that I find with a lot of properties. And if I would put my number on that, because as you know, I'm kind of a numbers geek, right? But I would say, guys, that probably 50% of the properties that I go on um, that have had someone else work on them all have the same common denominator. And that common denominator is what we're going to talk about today. The number one reason why habitat improvements fail. So there's a, a, a lot of things that we could talk about today, guys, about the failure. Probably one of the biggest, right, is improper placement of food sources, whether that's ag or most more popular, a food plot, right? That can make huge, huge issues on a property. But I think that ties into what we're going to talk about today. And we're going to just going to talk about what I feel is that number one reason why any and, and or all um, habitat improvements fail. And to me, guys, it has everything to do with the flow of your property. Time and time again, over, like I said, probably 50% of my clients a year, 30 to 40 clients would be half of my clients a year. Each and every one of those that are struggling have this same problem, and it's the flow. What I mean, when I say flow, what I mean by that is, the flow of the property, the flow around the property, hopefully that's a 360 degree circulation that we talk of. But on the other hand, um, if it's not, you have to realize that all properties just don't, um, that, that can't have a 360 degree circulation. So there are some of those out there. But when I say, when I put the emphasis on flow, guys, what I mean is having a property that when you set that farm up, setting the, the flow of that property has everything to do with where that habitat is placed. So, so often I find that whether someone recommended that you do this or, or whether you tried this uh, on your property yourself, what I find guys is there's a distinct description here, a, a, a knowledge base that you have to know between TSI and FSI and how that ties into deer and whitetail habitat improvements, right? Like I said, time and time again, I find that that common denominator is that the property is enhanced to make it great for the deer, but it's not great for us to hunt it when the deer want to be there. If that doesn't collide, right? If those two situations don't meet, stay in the house and watch college football. That's what I, I say to a lot of my clients around the country and it gets a lot of chuckles, but guys, it is the God's honest truth, right? It's time and time again, I go to these properties and it's like the habitat might not be, might not be bad, right? The problem with it is it's not in those right locations where you can actually hunt that stand location and that habitat improvement that you've done is leading uh, that that cruising buck, let's say, um, to a point of impact, right? To a uh, getting him in trouble, that final destination, if you will, for him to get him in trouble because they live by, they live and die by their noses. So, like I said, a lot of those properties are set up for them 
and it's not good for us. So you have to kind of know how to bring those two together. And guys, I'll be honest with you, is it, it just comes with having time in the property or in the woods, designing properties, seeing a property and knowing right off the bat that kind of that speed scouting, if you will, that we have to do, I have to do um, on, on client properties, taking your hunting strategy or your hunting knowledge from the property. Um, maybe it's a new property, right? But my, my mind has to go immediately to how can I put you in a place and how can I put them in that same place at the same time? So what dictates that, right, is wind and thermals, right? Your access, your in and out plan, being there in that stand, taking advantage of the thermals and the wind being good for you and that being good for him. It, it's, it sounds simple, but you would be shocked on how many uh, clients, or how many folks that reach out to me and how many folks I talk to around the country as a whole, set the property up and we're gonna do a couple things here that are that I see each and every time and until you see that, until we diagnose that, until I tell you that is the problem, that light bulb doesn't go off. And once it does, your success on your property, like I tell all my clients, that the first step of, in, into your property after the design, I hate the word guarantee, but I know I can get you 50% better than what you were before I was there. And the reason for that is, guys, it's a new set of eyes a lot of the things I do is a lot of different ways of hunting, right? Strategy, but when I when I bring that light bulb, turn that light bulb, flip that switch on for folks, right? You'll never ever hunt your property and or any other property the same ever again because you're looking for these things. You're keying on these situations. What you're doing is you're putting yourself in their shoes, right? We're building it for them first and foremost, knowing that we can hunt them when they want to be there. So let's go to the board here, guys. We've moved a couple things around. I'm hoping that this this is kind of going to be um, our new studio setup here just because uh, we've got a couple other things going on that I, I'd like to showcase here as we go. Um, but we got the board here on the wall, guys, today. And we're going to work. I'm going to zoom you in on this and I'm going to touch base with you here just real quick. And there's a lot of variables, right? But I'm going to touch base with you real quick on how and why there has to be a knowledge base that you have to be able to determine between TSI and FSI. TSI is your timber stand improvement. That, in other words, to me, when I'm speaking TSI, I'm, I'm talking about managing the timber for improving the timber for the best stand that that timber stand, that TSI could possibly be. M most of the time, that's not wildlife or whitetail um, friendly, right? That's not, not that it's not needed. Uh, and we're going to go over that, but it's not what most people are trying to create for whitetail habitat. And we're just labeling it TSI. There has to be a knowledge base there that you know how to separate the two of them. The other side of that guys is FSI forest stand improvement. What you're doing for the forest, for the forbs and forages, for the food value, for the wildlife value and the timber stand, is attached to that down the road many years down the road but the forest stand improvement is what you're creating for that forest floor um, beneficial wildlife and whitetail habitat at nose level right three foot and below so we're going to talk right here guys that most of the properties we're just going to use this the blue is actually your access in from from a said property line or from the outside in right so if you're in ridge country this could be internal but if you're on flat ground, this is from the outside in, keeping that low impact and building that core that we speak of, right? Stand location is in red, and a lot of folks, I think, understand or are starting to understand this, this tee, teeing into your line of movement that we speak of and why that's so important, but it's not just the stand location itself that you have to think of, right? It's everything that leads into that stand location why that stand location is going to um, promote a good hunt, right? If it's not promoting a good hunt and they don't want to be there or they don't have to be there when you are there to hunt them, it's not a good situation. There's something further down the line that will make that better or there's something else that you can do in that location to better those odds. 
So what I find, guys, is first and foremost, and I when I find these uh, strategies being implemented on the line of travel that we're teeing into, what I'm finding a lot of is it's TSI, timber stand improvement, not FSI, right? So we're talking about timber stand improvement. So we're going in and and we don't want to cut the big uh, you know the big trees out, or we're promoting big trees. We're high grading the trees because we're going to come in and we're going to cut them years down the road. It's going to make a, make us a bunch of money. Well, that's okay, but you got to know that when you go to do that, where is your timber stand at right now? Is it best to cut it so you can hunt it twenty or for twenty years the same way, which I highly recommend, uh, or? Are you going, when you come in and do that five, 10, 15 years down the road, when Logger Joe shows up and offers you $50,000 for the timber on your property, if you cut it, are you going to destroy everything? And that's usually the answer of what's going to happen. So instead of the TSI approach, where we're, you know, folks are going in and, and learning about hinge cutting and hack and squirt and all this stuff, right? Going in and doing all this, and then five years from now, all of a sudden we figure out, hey, Logger Joe just offers us a big bunch of money. Now what do we do? What you're going to do is you just destroyed that whole area. That's either going to happen or your or your all your hard work that you put into that location is all for none because the canopy, the big canopy, the bigger trees wasn't removed and it's going to shade out and kill all your hinges and all the growth and all the hack and squirt that's done underneath it because you've got this big beautiful canopy on top. So either way, your habitat improvements are going to fail because they're going to get killed. You're either going to crush that stuff when you cut the logs down or you're going to kill it because there's no sunlight. So in these areas on the line of travel, we want, we want FSI, not TSI, right? We want FSI, not TSI when we're, we're, we're promoting a line of movement. So when we, when we want this, that's why I've got this down below. When you got to know which side of that line of travel, right, that you're building this on. This is what I see a lot of folks doing is promoting that habitat in too large of amounts or covering um, both sides of a line of travel. And if I'm in a stand location here and I'm hunting this, let's say this is north and I'm hunting this on a north, northwest, northeasterly winds, um, which is, you know, the perfect situation, right? But uh, I'm hunting that on that wind and this pocket on both sides of me, there's habitat on both sides. You have to stop and think, can they be there when I can't be there to hunt them? And the answer to that is yes. So immediately the brain needs to go to which side of that is. So what is it, right? It's FSI, not TSI. And what side of the line of travel does that need to stay on? It needs to stay on the line of tra travel that's best for you. So obviously on the opposite side of your line of travel. So when you're there, it's good for them, it's good for you, and you're both able to be there at the same time. So keep that into mind, guys. So in other words, this goes away, right? We need to promote that. We need to promote them enhancements on the right side. So here's the same situation, FSI. FSI, not TSI, right? Everything needs to be broadcasted in the right line of travel, on the right side of the line of travel, so it makes sense for us. So once we get that figured out, you're 50% there. You're 50% better than what you were before, right? Knowing those two things, 25% got you on the terminology, got you there on the terminology of FSI and TSI, and the other, the other 25% to get that 50% total is what side of the line of the travel does that need to be on so it enhances my hunt, not just enhances the habitat, right? You're enhancing the habitat, which is great, but if you're doing it all for them and not for you, you're doing it to hurt yourself, not to gain traction. So the, the last piece of that puzzle, guys, is this. Knowing this piece of the equation right here is the make or break. Knowing your the difference, like we talked to before, the FSI and TSI, just because this is FSI doesn't mean that this has to be FSI as well. Huge, huge devastation. Way too much FSI going on down here and not TSI going on down here, creating way too much behind the stand location. So 
here in this location and any location that is from your stand and through your approach or to your stand and back what you just walked through is not FSI that has to be TSI timber stand improvement big beautiful timber if you never cut another stick of timber off that guys you're doing yourself a favor big beautiful canopy means less habitat allows you to get into your stands huge huge piece of the puzzle so immediately we break this down we know that this needs to be TSI not FSI another 25 percent bam now you're 75 percent closer than you were before just simply knowing this terminology that I think that sadly is just a lot of is thrown around right in this this world of this uh you know this huge classroom I guess that we're always in and not not understanding the full process of that and there's so many equations guys that this ties to obviously this is a blank this is a flat board that we're talking about right where's your where's your access where's your where is your uh thermals are you below the line of travel are you above the line of travel so all of this in, is in motion right and changes but as a blueprint as, as kind of a floor plan if you will this is that strategy that why I feel very confident I'm trying to get my clients or being able to get my clients that 50 to 75 percent closer by just doing a couple things stands are in the right location your habitats in the right location and you understand what you're doing with that chainsaw and or if you even have to do anything with that chainsaw but but creating that in the right place and creating the right situation right TSI versus FSI so this year I encourage you to do is to take this information and think about this before you enter the woods with the chainsaws or the mulchers or the mowers or anything and make sure that you step back and you really research why we do what we do where we do it 